What's going on everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to tune your 30 series torque converter. We're going to be talking about driven pulleys, driven pulley springs, uh, driver pulley stall springs, and jack shafts as well as driven pulley diameters. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the driven pulley. The driven pulley is called the driven pulley because it is controlled by the driver pulley. The main job of the driven pulley is to control how and when it's going to shift from the low to high ratio. Now when you get your torque converter, if you get a genuine comet, it's going to come with a green spring. If you get the clone, it's going to come with a red. The way the spring's set up, it comes in the middle hole right here. And if you put it in this hole, it's going to lengthen the amount of time it takes to shift from the low to high ratio. And if you put it in this hole, it's going to shift from the low to high ratio a lot quicker so when you tighten it it's more generally better for off-roading and when you loosen it like that it's better for uh, flat land riding and drag racing now see I got these three springs right here this is a worn out genuine Comet 30 series driven spring and it's actually less stiff than the red one and the red one is less stiff than the yellow one so the green spring is going to shift from low to high ratio a lot faster than the red one, and the red one's going to do it um, I went faster than the yellow one. Now if you're doing drag racing, I'd say you probably want to go with this one, because it's going to shift to the higher ratio faster, and if your motor is going to got the power to pull it, you're going to accelerate faster. The fucking cats are going nuts. And generally, the yellow spring is going to be better for off-roading because it's going to hold the low ratio longer. And that means you can cruise at a higher speed and the low ratio at a higher RPM where you're making more power. So if that makes sense to you, it's, it's a little bit better for off-roading. Now these are general terms. It's not set in stone. And it really depends on your setup. Now we're, talk we're going to be talking about driver clutch stall springs as you can see in here we have a weight set and we have springs wrapped around it the combination of the weight weight set the weight of the weight set and the spring tension is what's going to give you your stall speed now this is a stock zinc uh, zinc die cast set and the stock spring so it's going to give you an engagement of 2200 rpms and on these small block motors, your 196s, 212s like that, you're going to be producing uh, peak torque at about 2500 RPMs. Now your stall speed is not going to be exactly 2200 because it depends on the weight, the machine, the gearing, and your power and so forth, So, but it's going to be generally uh, 2200 RPMs. Now the characteristics of this stall is going to be pretty nice for drivability. Um, if you're just putting around town, uh, riding back roads nice and slow or whatever, this is going to be perfect for you. You're not going to have to give it a lot of throttle to take off, and it's going to be smooth, and it's not going to be really jerky. Now, for example, right there, we got Genuine Comet 3600 RPM stall speed springs. And that is a really big amount of stall. Uh, that's going to be more made for... Uh, drag racing setup or something like an engine that's going to be spinning like 9,000 RPMs and it doesn't make power until 3,600 or 4,000 or something along those lines. And with those higher stall springs, you're gonna your drivability is gonna suffer. You're gonna, it's gonna be a lot more jerky and you're gonna give it have to pretty much be flooring it everywhere constantly. And that's not a bad thing if you like to haul ass or whatever, drag race or anything, but that's something to consider if you want to drive smoothly or you're going to have to put up with that. And another thing to mention with the higher stall springs and more tension in the driven pulley, it's going to wear belts a lot faster. Not a lot, but it's noticeable. Another thing I'm going to be talking about, the driven pulley diameter. Here we have a 6 inch driven and we have a 7 inch driven pulley. Um, the 6 inch is going to give you overall more top speed but the 7 inch is going to be give you a lot more low end torque off the line 
And these seven inch pulleys are typically found on your dog and Manco go karts with torque converters. But you're gonna put this on a mini bike. This is gonna give you an edge with a lot more torque off the line. And you pair that with a motor that can rev like 65, 7,500 RPMs. That's a good combination. So you can get off the line hard and still have enough RPMs uh, to use a lower gear ratio to win in a race. But here's one thing you gotta consider. With a six inch pulley, you're gonna have to use this jack shaft setup. And that's a pretty standard uh, TAF 2 30 series mounting pulley. But if you're using this seven inch rear pulley, you're gonna have to use a different belt, and you're gonna have to use this style jack shaft. Now this is a Yerf Dog style jack shaft that came with it uh, came on the bigger go-karts with Tecumseh engines. Now this jack shaft is going to use a longer belt than this one, and this one mounts differently. Rather than bolting to the side of the motor, motor on this one, this plate bolts underneath the motor and it's got an extra set of mounting holes right here you need to have mounted. And then you got other variables you need to consider, such as the machine weight, your gearing, and how much you weigh, because all those things is going to play a critical role to performance and how hard your machine accelerates or how easily drivable it is. Now this ain't set in stone by any means but generally uh, to cap things up you're going to be doing a drag racing setup you're gonna typically going to be wanting a higher stall speed in the clutch and you're going to want to use a, uh, a spring that allows a, the pulleys to shift from a low to high ratio faster and if you're off-roading you might want to consider a lower stall speed spring but still closer than closer to peak torque that way the whole low gear ratio longer and it'll just be a lot more driver friendly to drive so I'm not the best at explaining things uh, I got the ideas in my head that's just hard sometimes to put them to words but this is just a basic overview on how to tune your converters, so if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.